Here, let us go. Oop, let's zip it up a little bit. Good morning. Morning. Uh, uh, that's nice. Everybody's awake this morning. Okay. Hello, everybody. We are going to talk about the. What are we going to talk about today? The what? The fifth luminous mystery today. Okay, we are already at the end of October, the end of the month. Um, it's Halloween night. And for most people, they're going to be garbed in all sorts of monstrous uh, costumes. But for us Catholics, we have a different understanding of what Halloween is. Right? Uh, it's originally a Catholic feast that, of course, uh, in America and some parts of the world, they had transformed into a very pagan and actually, sadly, demonic celebration. But Halloween is actually Hallow's Eve. Today is the day before All Saints Day, and uh, that means the eve of a big feast where we celebrate all the fe all the saints uh, that we have in the Catholic Church those that are uh, named and proclaimed and proposed saints for us to emulate these are the people who are already in the church triumphant as we call them okay they are the ones who have already um, uh, succeeded in their struggle for sanctity and they are in heaven so those are the ones we celebrate uh, tomorrow uh, November 1st okay so let's not forget that and uh, today is the eve of that celebration and um, the Catholic way of celebrating Hallow's Eve is to try to anticipate the day of the Saints it's not to go around uh, dressed up in uh, in ugly demonic costumes that uh, portray uh, the devil because that's what it's all about okay? it's not the day of uh, ugly saints I mean ugly ghosts and uh, and um, monsters okay that is the pagan way and that is not our Catholic way we'll talk about uh, this feast more tomorrow but uh, today being Halloween I just wanted to remind everybody that uh, you know don't fall into that trap of celebrating Halloween with uh, ugly costumes okay but today uh, being the end of October already we're, we're still not done meditating on all of the uh, mysteries of the rosary we got a couple of uh, mysteries that uh, we might have to uh, work on uh, this coming weekend but today we um, we're gonna meditate on uh, the fifth luminous mystery and the fifth luminous mystery is Institution of the Holy Eucharist. Very good, Chevelle. The institution of the Holy Eucharist. So what can we bear in mind? What can we imagine? What can we think about every time we pray the fifth mystery? Oops. Who touched my camera? Be careful, Jana. What can we think about whenever we uh, pray the fifth luminous mystery? The institution of the Holy Eucharist. You see, there's plenty. There are plenty, plenty of things to talk about regarding the Holy Eucharist. Okay? This is one of the biggest mysteries that we have in our faith. The mystery of Christ not only transforming bread and wine into his own body and blood through the instrumentation of his ministers the priest who have been ordained to carry out this uh, mystery that happens at every mass on our altars but it is also it is also the mystery that reminds us that Christ wanted to remain with us. That Jesus wanted to remain with us. That although he was leaving, 
that although he was ending his life on earth because of his crucifixion and death and because eventually after his resurrection he was going back to heaven body and soul he wanted to institutionalize his presence on earth and remain with us through the Eucharist. And that is why he gave us this very, very big gift of the Holy Eucharist. His own body, blood, soul, and divinity masked in that form of bread and wine. So Jesus is hidden from view, hidden from plain sight, hidden from our senses in that piece of bread, in that cup of wine, which is really, indeed, his own body and his own blood. What are the implications for us of this great mystery? Today, for now, I'd like us to think of one thing, and that is how God wanted to be with us, not only spiritually, but physically. This is God, this is Jesus, wanting to be with us. This is Jesus telling us to not only be with Him, but be in Him. By Him wanting to come into our own bodies. By Him wanting to dominate our own bodies. He wanted to be inside of us that we be the tabernacle of Jesus Himself. To carry Him around. To assimilate Him in our own bodies. So that He can transform us into Himself. Okay? So this is the this is the whole mystery here of the, uh, the Holy Eucharist. Jesus wanting to remain with us and in us. So let us, let us, uh, let us give thanks uh, for this mystery every time that we pray the fifth luminous mystery of the Rosary. Let us always give thanks for the fact that Jesus institutionalized this sacrament the Holy Eucharist in order to remain with us and that is why that is why uh, we keep him in our tabernacles <clears throat> that is why we we put him in a special place in our churches so that he could stay there to wait for us to welcome us so that any time that we have a need to approach him any time that we have a need to be with him and any time that we feel like we need consolation and help, we go to our Lord in the tabernacle. Jesus is there waiting for us. Jesus is there wanting to talk to us. Jesus is there wanting to hear whatever it is we want to tell him. He wants to hear all the good news about ourselves, all the good things we have been doing. At the same time, he also wants to hear all of our aches and pains, all of our sorrows, all of our difficulties, all of our struggles, all of our disappointments, all of our great plans for ourselves, all of our failures, all of the... He wants us to, to talk to Him about all of our affections and even the, and our disappointments with people. And our, and our uh, uh, um, challenges and the virtues we want to acquire, the virtues that we lack. Jesus is waiting in our tabernacles. Jesus wants to be with us. And he is waiting for us to accompany him in this great mystery of the Blessed Sacrament, the Holy Eucharist. That is why... And some of you have already heard me say this many times, but I'm going to say it again. That is why it's very, very wrong for us to be locking up our churches for the larger part of the day. 
And this is a problem we're having here at St. Joseph's, our very own parish. They lock up the church and their reason is for security purposes. And I have been saying, and I'm saying it again, and those of you from St. Joseph's Church who might be hearing me, and those of you from other parishes who might be in similar situations, this is doctrinally and theologically wrong for you to be locking up the churches and preventing people from having access to Jesus in the tabernacle just because you are afraid. Just because you want to secure your church or the people who go there. I mean, you know, I get it. We live in a terrible world now. We live in a world where uh, you can't even walk safely in the streets alone. But that is no reason to prevent people from coming to Jesus. With all the more reason, in fact, should we open our churches. Because in these turbulent days, with all the more need do people have for Jesus. All the more do people need to go to Jesus in the tabernacle who is waiting for them. Let us not stop people from having free access to Jesus in the tabernacle. It will be very wrong doctrinally and theologically to be locking up the doors of the church and preventing people from going to Jesus. In this day and age of technology and all the resources, resources that the people have, it is ironic that we have to be locking up the church. It is ironic that we will prevent people from having access to Jesus in the tabernacle, all in the guise and in the flimsy excuse of security. That is not a good enough reason to prevent people from having access to Jesus. In the first place, those of you who do that are committing a very, very grave error, doctrinally and theologically, in favor of a flimsy excuse of security. Mind you, uh, I know of several other places, in the, just here in California, that, that are more terrible. Uh, and more crime-ridden than Modesto. Yet their churches are open. And everybody is welcome to come and pray and stay with Jesus and visit Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. So those of you who might be listening to this broadcast and you are from St. Joseph's and you have influence on people there, please speak up. Speak up about this very, very wrong practice of locking up our churches. And I would encourage everybody, visit Jesus. Visit Jesus. There's another beautiful uh, pious act, a pious norm, which is called the visit to the Blessed Sacrament. And this is something that uh, we, our whole family, uh, do every day. Okay? Uh, a very beautiful prayer, visit to the Blessed Sacrament, which I would encourage everybody to do. Take Carve out a few minutes of your day to go and visit Jesus in the tabernacle who is waiting for you. So today, let us keep that in mind as we pray the, the fifth uh, luminous mystery, Jesus waiting for us. That can be a very nice image to keep in mind as we pray that decade. Jesus wanting to be with us. Jesus waiting for us. When he told his apostles, do this in memory of me. That statement means that we have to perpetuate his presence. That we, they, and us have to perpetuate Jesus in the Eucharist till the end of time. Therefore, it would be very wrong to prevent people from having access to him when they need him. Okay, that's it for us. We're off to Mass, folks. Bye. Have a good day, everybody. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bye, Eva. Bye-bye. <laughs>